हेलो डियर स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू द चैनल एंड वेलकम टू द दिस प्लेलिस्ट इन विच वी आर डिस्कसिंग द बेसिक्स ऑफ पावर सिस्टम्स बेसिक प्रिंसिपल्स ऑफ पावर सिस्टम अप अपिल नाउ वी हैव सीन टन्स ऑफ कॉन्सेप्ट वी हैव लर्न अलॉट ऑफ थिंग्स सो इफ यू हैवन चेकड आउट द प्ले लिस्ट फ्राम द बिगिनिंग प्लीज चेक आउट इफ यू आर इन टू पावर सिस्टम एंड प्लीज सब्सक्राइब टू द चैनल इफ यू आर इन टू पावर सिस्टम सो नाउ uh up till now we have seen so many topics in the last very last lecture of this uh, playlist we have explored about uh, synchronous machine uh, about the power factor of a uh, synchronous machine um, we have discussed no load conditions we have discussed on load conditions we have seen the power factor control of synchronous machine in no load and with uh, load conditions and uh, continuing that today we are going to discuss the power factor control of synchronous generator so in order to understand the power factor control of synchronous generator i would recommend you to uh, watch the previous video first so that it will be uh, easier for you to grasp the con uh, concept but uh, even if you have not seen the previous video uh, you are still good you can still understand but uh, uh, still i would recommend you to watch the previous video if you haven't seen the uh, previous video already so uh, please check out the previous video if you haven't on the on the i button tab uh, it will be flashing on the top right uh, top right hand corner of your video and if you have already seen that so let's continue with the power factor control of synchronous generator so uh, about the synchronous generator the synchronous generator has the excitation control unit okay see here uh, in figure you can see this is an excitation control unit and uh, uh, the field current or excitation is uh, getting controlled okay the field current or uh, excitation current is uh, getting controlled by this excitation control unit itself okay so here you can see excitation control unit here we are having field system of synchronous generator uh, which by which we are controlling the field current right and here you can see this is my field system and uh, here excitation uh, control system can control the excitation okay now let's take a case as we want to discuss the power factor of synchronous generator let's take a case of a synchronous generator which is connected to the infinite bus okay a synchronous generator which is connected to the uh, connected to the infinite bus now um how it will look like see uh these are let's assume this is infinite bus and this is my generator okay it is producing power e uh, it is producing sorry emf e so uh, the load and the alternator we will keep uh, constant so load will be constant and uh, what we will do we will change the excitation okay uh, we will change by by me uh, by mean excitation i mean we will change the field current okay and uh, Uh, the emf of the alternator will change as per the excitation right the emf will change as per excitation so what will be the emf right remember the formula of emf so the emf will be this much right 4.44 kc kd phi into f into t okay so uh, can't we say that from this formula 4.44 is constant kc and kd are also constant a uh, number of turns are also most of the times is constant frequency we always try to maintain as close to uh, 50 if you are uh, in asia and uh, asia pacific region most of the times we maintain 50 close to 50 so it is also you can consider constant so what is the variable here only phi right so my uh, emf will be dependent on my flux phi okay and what does it depend on it depends on the field current right or wrong it depends on field current in synchronous motor right so uh load is constant as we uh, mentioned earlier that we are uh, keeping the load constant and we are uh, changing the excitation or field uh, field winding right field current so load is constant so uh, can't we say the uh, load angle will also remain uh, constant right we have seen uh, what is load angle in the previous video so uh, that is why i was saying if you have checked out previous video it would be more easier for you to grasp the concept but if even if you haven't uh, you will understand as we move further what is the load angle okay so load angle will remain constant and uh, let's say 
फॉर अ कॉन्स्टेंट लोड द आर्मीचर करंट इज आई ए वन ओके लेट से फॉर अ कॉन्स्टेंट करंट माई आर्मीचर करंट इज आई ए वन ई एम एफ इज ई वन एंड वोल्टेज इज वोल्टेज अक्रॉस द लोड इज वी ओके द वोल्टेज अक्रॉस माई लोड इज वी ई एम एफ इज ई वन एंड आर्मीचर करंट इज आई ए वन ओके एंड लेट्स नाउ ट्राई नाउ वी विल ट्राई टू प्लॉट अ फेजर डायग्राम बेस्ड ऑन दैट ओके वील ट्राई टू प्लॉट द फेजर डायग्राम डोंट वरी डोंट गेट कन्फ्यूज आफ्टर लुकिंग गेट इट वी स्लोली मूव फॉरवर्ड फर्स्ट बिफोर डायरेक्टली गोइंग टू फेजर डायग्राम फर्स्ट वी लेट्स डिस्कस अबाउट फ्यू कॉन्स्टेंट थिंग्स लाइक फ्रॉम द पावर आउटपुट इक्वेशन हम वी सीन दैट द पावर इज इक्वल टू ई जीरो इन टू वी डिवाइडेड बाई एक्सेस इन टू साइन डेल्टा राइट एंड यू नो ई वॉट इज वॉट आर दिस वोल्टेज ई जीरो इज माई ई एम एफ जनरेटेड वी इज माई वोल्टेज अक्रॉस द लोड एक्सेस इज माई रिएक्टेंस एंड साइन डेल्टा इज साइन ऑफ माई लोड एंगल ओके सो एज द लोड इज कॉन्स्टेंट द पावर विल ऑल्सो रिमेन कॉन्स्टेंट राइट Now, as power remains constant, uh, can't we manipulate this equation a little, and can't we do something like that? That we will take this excess over here. So, P into excess is equals to E zero V into sine delta, right? Now, I want to make E zero uh, sine delta subject. So, uh, this V will also go into the denominator of this one. So, E zero sine delta will be P into excess divided by V, and it will still be constant. Okay, it will. still be constant now uh, let's keep this equation as it is let's call this equation equation 1 or something and uh, then uh, tell me what will be the power uh, power equation for this so we all know that power is vi into cos phi right we uh, power is vi into cos phi now as my load is uh, remaining constant there is a uh, no change in load right so if there will be no change in load so uh, there will be no change in the angle between voltage and current right uh, i'm talking about phi here the angle between voltage and current will not change as load is remaining as it is and as the angle will not change so cosine of that angle will also no, not change what does it means my cos phi is constant right now as the load is not changing what is v v is voltage across the load so my load is itself is not changing so how will my voltage will change and same can we say for the current right current will also remain constant so the whole term will be constant so the power will be constant and as power is constant can't we say ia into cos phi is equals to constant as well because my whole term is constant so you can take any individual uh, quantity from it and you can call it constant because the whole term is constant means every single quantity is also constant or uh, in other terms they are adjusting with each other we, uh, we will see how they are adjusting with each other i a cos phi actually uh, are adjusting with each other uh, so we will see that when uh, we will go in deep with uh, this uh, phasor diagram of that But for now, uh, say that I a cos phi is also con uh, constant, right? Now, uh, tell me what will happen when I will change the excitation EMF? Okay. When I will change my excitation, so uh, as I change my excitation, what will happen? My EMF will change, right? Because excitation is getting changed, so uh, induced EMF will change. But haven't we told that here that E zero sine delta is constant, and P into x is divided by V is also constant, right? We have seen here that E zero sine delta is remaining constant. Okay, and we are only changing excitation. Remember, we are only changing uh, excitation here. So, uh, what we are doing? We are changing excitation. which means we are uh, changing the field current and uh, the electrical load we are not doing anything with that okay so what will happen in this case uh, pay a very close attention here so uh, when excitation will be changed your emf will be changed definitely your emf will be changed 
but the load angle the delta delta will be uh, will also change but how it will change it will change such that the multiplication of both of these terms e0 into sin delta will remain constant okay so what will happen when you change the excitation your e0's value will change okay but with e0 delta will also change and how uh, how much the delta will change delta will change that much that it can neutralize e0's change okay so that your value always remains constant let's say if my e0 is uh, if my e0 is 4 okay and my sine delta is uh, my sine delta is 0.5 okay so uh, what will be the multiplication of both of them 4 into 0.5 it will be 2 right constant 2 now if I change my uh, e0 uh, if I change my e0 to something something like uh, uh, whatever I change my e0 sine delta will be changed so that it can maintain the constant value let's say first we took uh, e0 as 4 and sine delta is 0.5 so 0.5 into 4 will be remained uh, will will become what 2 right so now uh, if I make my e0 2 then my sine delta's value will become 1 so that the uh, value of multiplication of both of them can become constant right so if my e0 will be 4 sine delta 0.5 then multiplication will be 2 if my e0 is 4 sine delta 0.5 multiplication 2 if my e0 will become 2 then sine delta will become 1 so 2 into 1 always again will become equal to 2 right so the uh, multiplication of both of them will remain uh, remain constant okay remember that and uh, we will represent this with the help of figure diag uh, this uh, this figure which i'm going to show you that uh, this phasor diagram okay now let's come to the phasor diagram initially what we are doing we are taking v as a reference so what we are doing we are taking v as a reference remember what is v in this case v is voltage across the load in this case okay uh, don't uh, confuse this v with the v what we have seen in the last lecture in the last lecture what was v v was my supply voltage but here what is v v is the voltage across the load okay so uh, V is my voltage across the load we will take it as a reference and now as we seen uh, what was my EMF my EMF was E1 remember so as my voltage is V my EMF will be E1 now EMF E1 is drawn here can you tell me how and why is it drawn here because if you remember with motors case what did we do we drawn it somewhere here here right we saw because based on lenses uh, lenses though it was opposing it okay so what happened so what happened is it is still opposing its uh, uh, generated voltage it is not uh, uh, going against the lens low but what is happening here uh, this voltage v is the uh, is my voltage across the load so e will be here because your supply this is not your supply voltage okay your supply voltage will be somewhere else okay so e will come here and remember what did we learn in last lecture that uh, my current will lag from my induced emf by 90 degrees remember it will be lagging by 90 degrees so ia1 will be lagging to 90 degrees compared to e1 right I1 will lag E1 by 90 degrees. And now let's consider uh, this first uh, this first case where we are taking V, E1 and I1 only. Forget about all other vectors which are you are seeing, uh, which you are seeing on the screen right now. Just focus on these three. We are having V, we are having E1, this one, and we are having I1, these three. Okay. And let's consider a uh, excitation of uh, let's say if1 and uh, we are having emf what is the value of emf here e1 
ओके सो द ड्रॉप वॉट विल बी द वैल्यू ऑफ ड्रॉप हेयर ओके सो कैंट वी से द वैल्यू ऑफ ड्रॉप विल बी द रिजल्टेंट ऑफ दिस लोड वोल्टेज एंड करंट आई ए वन राइट आर्मीचर करंट एंड लोड वोल्टेज इज रिजल्टेंट विल बी माई ड्रॉप राइट सो हाउ विल वी फाइंड इट सो वे विल डू नथिंग बट वी विल डू देर वैक्टर समेशन सो we will add them here and uh, this this dotted line which you are saying will will be my ia1 into xs okay will be my ia1 into xs and this ia1 xs we will uh, shift it over here see we we are shifting ia1 xs over here so uh, for constant load what will happen Uh, before going to constant load, uh, this this condition which I've just shown you that when we are having I A one X one here from uh, well ahead from uh, my uh, load voltage, this condition is called over excitation condition. Okay, this condition is called over excitation condition. Now let's uh, move to the case where we are having uh, constant load and I A one is. Uh, IA one into cos phi, we are keeping it constant. Okay, IA one cos phi is constant. So, what will be the cosine component of IA one? So, it will be here, right? It will be IA two, right? So, uh, IA two is cosine component of my IA one, and this condition. Will remain constant throughout the whole operation. Okay, there will be no change in the condition throughout the whole operation. So, uh, as there is no change, what we will do? We will just draw a a dashed line, which will pass pass through between uh, this I A one and I A two's uh, heads, so that we can confirm that this condition will remain constant. So, we just drawn that, and. The tip of I A will always lie on this uh, dotted line, which we have just drawn. The line A dash. Okay. So, uh, dotted line will always uh, lie on. Uh, sorry, the current vector line will always lie on this dotted line. Okay, A dash. And what is my power angle here? My power angle is del one. So now, say let's if uh, let's say if excitation is changing, we are changing uh, excitation from I F one to I F two. What will happen? Current will also change. Okay, this time current will become I A two. We are changing uh, excitation I F one to I I uh, I F two. So my current will be I A two. See, and my current is in phase with the load uh, uh, load voltage. Okay, voltage across the load. So, what will be the power factor in this case? Voltage and current are both in same phase. So power factor will be unity, right? Power factor will be one. And when my power factor is 1 such kind of uh, arrangement or such kind of uh, excitation which is corresponding to this uh, arrangement it is called normal excitation in which we are having uh, which we are having drops uh, which will be perpendicular to v see this condition is called normal excitation condition okay or ideal excitation con uh, condition now let's say uh, emf corresponding to uh, this new condition is e2 so uh, if we are having emf which will be e2 remember what we have seen earlier that ea sin delta always remains constant right e0 sin delta always remains constant what does it means last time uh what happened when we changed ea my cosine was what was my cos uh, cos delta 1 De uh, my angle was delta 1 right and value was ea now we are change changing again uh, we are changing the excitation so my emf induced will be e e2 right and based on this e2 there will be change in my load angle so this load angle will this time become delta 2 Such that the multiplication of uh, e two e two this value and 
sine component of this delta 2 will remain constant so if you take the sine component of this delta 2 it will always come this far so see this e1 e2 and even this uh, e3 all three of them are in same horizontal plane if you can see that right all three of them are in same horizontal plane so uh, just like how we uh, drew this dotted line for uh, constant currents we can also draw the dotted line for constant volt uh, constant emf here right see because e1 uh, e1 e2 and e3 are uh, the multiplication of uh, e into sine delta is always remaining constant right now let's talk about the third case now we are changing the excitation uh, from if2 to if3 and current is changing from ia2 to ia3 see previous case we had current ia2 this time we are having ia3 again notice uh, the tip of my current vector is always staying on this a dash dotted line okay so again uh, my this time my current is ia3 and uh, this time if you notice it is leading the v initially see it was behind uh, the v behind the uh, load voltage after that it caught up with load voltage and it was in phase with load voltage and this time what what is happening it is leading the voltage see current is leading the voltage here so what will happen with my power factor this time as my current is leading the voltage my power factor will be leading this time okay and when such condition happens when uh, uh, the power factor becomes leading such excitation of uh, this uh, excitation we called it if3 uh, corresponding to such phenomena such condition is called under excitation condition okay it will be called under excitation condition why because uh, your excitation is not enough because what ha what is happening here your current is leading your voltage your excitation is not enough here so it is called under excitation condition okay and what will be the emf induced corresponding to the, this uh, uh, new condition if3 it will be e3 and you can see it will plot it somewhere here right and the power angle will be again delta 3 again as i uh, mentioned earlier what will happen the delta 3 will adjust such that the multiplication of e3 and uh, uh, sine delta 3 becomes constant so that e3 will also fall in the same plane as e1 and e2 same horizontal plane as e1 and e2 see right so uh, always remember for uh, the case of synchronous generator what will always happen that uh, e0 sine delta will always remain constant so see this line you can represent it with this line e0 sine delta uh, it, imagine this line there is no line which i have drawn but uh, imagine the line which i uh, over which i am uh, uh, rolling the cursor so imagine this as e0 sine delta and this vertical line a8 dash it is uh, a cos phi it is also uh, it will also remain uh, uh, the current of uh, the value of currents uh, current will always uh, fall on the uh, fall on the same plane okay a dash now let's uh, come to discussing different excitation uh, just a quick summary so what was happening when my power factor was uh, lagging the excitation condition was over excitation see here my power factor is uh, lagging see uh, voltage is ahead of current so what is happening over excitation right here is my e1 and here is the resultant so it's called over excitation when my power factor is unity it is called normal excitation see uh, here current and voltage both are in phase and the drop will remain uh, perpendicular to voltage so such condition is called normal excitation and third condition when your current is actually leading your voltage see here is my voltage the current is actually leading the voltage and this e3 is falling short and it is see 
is coming here this will be my uh, drop so such condition is called under excitation okay so that was your uh, power factor control of synchronous generator and uh, now we are going to discuss one more topic today uh, it is a uh, salient pole synchronous generator we are going to discuss now so firstly uh, any rotating fluid type uh, machine has uh, two types if you are unaware of that there are two types of any rotating ty uh, fluid type machine uh, first one is called salient pole machines another one is called non non salient pole machines okay so today we are going to discuss about the salient pole machines uh, in particular we are going to discuss about salient pole synchronous generator so the uh, figure has been shown to you that you can see on uh, this outer portion is the stator portion right and this inner portion we are having rotor the whole portion we are uh, we are having rotor over here and here we are uh, having uh, different poles right fluid poles and the winding will be uh, winding will be in, uh, wrapped over these poles something like uh, something like this right via this uh, exciting coils right and uh, to the field winding we will be uh, sending the DC DC supply right as we discussed earlier as well and in, uh, in previous lectures right so now uh, let's come to the stator let's start uh, let's uh, discuss about uh, stator uh, and I'm also going to discuss about the uh, construction of the machine we are not going into the detail of uh, working of machine uh, I will make separate video on it but uh, uh, for now on we are going only going to discuss about the construction of the salient pole machines okay so uh, what is happening with stator so stator uh, my stator is having a three phase AC winding right with uh, uh, fractional slots or you can say internal slots here you can see we're having slots and uh, the slots uh, with slots we are having full pitch or uh, short pitch coils right so the coils can be either uh, full pitch or short pitch and uh, the conductors let's uh, talk about the conductors so uh, in uh, there are, uh, what happens in uh, the old old uh, stators the old type of stators what used to happen the conductors used to be uh, transposed and uh, they used to be insulated with uh, 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 a material called uh, uh, myconite uh, bitumen bonded myconite and they used to be wrapped as a tape okay and they used to be vacuum dried and uh, then uh, they used to be impregnated with uh, bitumen and uh, bitumen okay with under uh, with uh, some pressure applied on it but uh, uh, recently uh, after uh, uh, some design for design changes what what we are doing we are using uh, synthetic resins in place of uh, bitumen okay we are using synthetic resins uh, now let's come to the winding so winding is placed in the slots deep inside the semi enclosed slot punch uh, slots see deep inside the uh, semi enclosed slots and uh, punched out in the stampings along with the ventilation holes shaft holes and uh, keyways okay so the stampings which we are uh, we are going to see the stampings are uh, uh, made up of uh, uh, steel alloys the steel alloys which are called crgo steels which uh, uh, what uh, what do we do for that we take the whole um, crgo alloy for uh, any small capacity machines and uh, uh, if you want uh, want to go for a uh, high rated machines as well stampings what do we do with stampings we assemble them to uh, form the core okay uh, uh, we apply uh, so much pressure over them and uh, then uh, they are fitted between uh, non magnetic end plates okay now let's come to the rotor part let's come to the rotor part so uh, rotor is also made up of uh, alloy steel also and uh, 
uh, what do we, they do with this alloy steel they uh, taste that alloy steel of rotor f uh, ultrasonically for uh, uh, for uh, to uh, put them in the rotor and uh, uh, after that uh, some solid forging takes place okay solid forging and ultrasonic tasting uh, is uh, done on the material alloy steel and then they are used in the rotor and what uh, what happens uh, the two third of rotor is uh, milled for teeth only okay so uh, this uh, normal coils will be accommodated in the slots okay with uh, flat strips having uh, separators you know uh, separators between uh, the turns and uh, for that what do we do we need uh, slip rings to convey the current okay and uh, uh, what uh, what did that slip rings made of they are made of of uh, copper fitted myconite okay myconite i just to told you about that we don't uh, uh, use that so much now we use uh, synthetic resin but uh, for uh, rotor they are used and uh, they are fitted in the ha uh, how how do they fit it uh, they fit it half inside and half outside of uh, your uh, main bearing okay uh, i think uh, it would be better to demonstrate it uh, with the help of animation so it will be more clear to you but right now i'm only having this picture for you okay so let's come to uh, i think this image will uh, may be able to help you so let's first uh, now discuss about the damper winding what happens with damper winding damper winding uh, or you can call it uh, damper bars as well as uh, the damper winding is very short in this cases so they are also made up of co copper only okay and uh, they are shorted in bo both the ends right with using this shorting rings or end rings see they are very much shorted on both the sides and uh, then my field winding here you can see the field winding so this field winding is uh, uh, normally made up of uh, rectangular conductors and uh, the field winding is placed on the pole core okay so the rotor uh, are usually vertically mounted with the thrust bearings uh, especially if you are uh, uh, going for a uh, water wheel alternators they are uh, vertically mounted with thrust be uh, thrust bearings uh, the poles are carried on the main hub of your uh, rotor and uh, then shrunk after making them uh, after making them from uh, uh, what do you call those uh, uh, disc type of material thick thick disc type of materials okay then the pole structure is a uh, whole pole structure is laminated and uh, then they provide the slots in the pole shoe and uh, after that uh, they uh, uh, by the way they provide the poles for the uh, pole, pole they provide the slots for the uh, in the pole shoe to house this damper winding only right see here you can see to house this damper winding only and uh, um, why do we need by the way damper winding what happens with damper winding that uh, damper winding is useful for starting my synchronous motor right when we start the synchronous motor we initially uh, start it uh, as an induction motor and then slowly uh, we take uh, the speed of my synchronous motor to synchronous speed okay so for that we need uh, uh, we need uh, the damper winding uh, except for that what happens um, uh, except for starting my synchronous motor it is also useful for stability in the synchronous motor and even generators it is also uh, provides stability to my synchronous motor and synchronous generator okay so uh, the this section that this you are seeing of field uh, field winding section or uh, uh, section for the field winding what happens the field coils will be wounded in this section only okay and uh, uh, this section is uh, as you can see it is made up of uh, uh, rectangular kind of strips okay all uh, combined together right and uh, there is an insulation between the turns of this winding and that, that uh, insulation is called uh, asbestos rubber insulation 
okay uh now uh let's discuss about uh, um, how or why do we call uh, damper winding the damper winding so the story behind this uh, goes something like that that uh, whenever we uh, whenever we change the load on the synchronous machine uh there uh, there is some oscillation rises in the rotor part okay so the rotor part we find some oscillations and uh, because of that what happens if my rotor is in the mean position then it moves uh, it moves to uh, non mean position and if it is in the non mean position it moves to mean position okay so it uh, keeps toggling like that and it keeps toggling in the direction of rotation only uh, here you will be able to understand it better with this right so uh, it starts toggling it uh, keeps toggling between them and uh, when such thing happens uh, your rotor body will face some uh, mechanical stress over it right and because uh, if my motor uh, or uh, if my rotor will uh, face mechanical stress over it uh, it is not very much desirable right it is uh, harmful for your machine so in order to damp this oscillations what do we do we use damper winding okay uh, what happens when such oscillations happens uh, there will be some emf will be produced right in damper winding see where is damper winding given here right here we are having my damper winding so my when my pole will go like this it will toggle like this or it will change like this what will happen there will be some emf which will be produced right in my damper winding because of these oscillations so the emf which this emf in the damper winding which uh, just has been induced uh, according to the lenz law what will happen it will oppose the cause of the pro production of itself right so what it will do it will oppose these oscillations it will oppose these oscillations and as it will oppose the oscillations the uh, uh, this oscillations will be neutraled out or they will be damped in other words and because uh, it uh, damps this oscillations it is called damper winding okay and uh, another part as i already mentioned that it is also used for uh, starting of synchronous motor right because synchronous synchronous motor is not self starting motor so what do we do we start it with uh, with the help of damper winding uh, initially we use it as an induction motor and then we take it to the synchronous speed and uh, uh, after that it continuously run on synchronous uh, synchronous speed okay so uh, that was it for today in the next lecture we will be discussing uh, a few more things we will be go uh, we will be seeing the different types of loads and uh, a few more things so if you have any doubts any queries or any feedback any suggestion for uh, for me uh, please feel free to mention in the comment section below and i'll be seeing you in the next lecture so till then goodbye and take care thank you very much for listening